Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Renee, this is Fictional Crafts and this little series of videos is my challenge to myself to read a hundred indie authors that write science fiction, namely adult. Yes, it's a mouthful. Yes, I haven't figured it out. Anyway, and we have a JJ. Hello, beautiful boy. Um, so this is book four which is the Hypersleep Chronicles. Now, bear with me, because I did read this book about a week ago, <laughs> and I've been reading Babel since, so I might get some details wrong, but all in all, good book. I enjoyed it, nice and short. It was a good little read. It has some issues, But then again, I've picked out issues with babbles, so, you know, and I'm only 50 pages in. Um, sorry, I'm just guzzling my coffee. I need to. Okay. So, The Hypersleep Chronicles by Andrew Craft. I enjoyed it. It was good. I read it in a night. It's only like 100, 170 or something pages. Give me a second. Um. This history events, uh, 173 pages of actual book. There's a few things that are behind that. And it's, it's an interesting concept. Um, it's slow, slow colony ships, frozen people, um, with only a couple, with only a small team being rewoken every, I think it's 80 years earth time to go to the next, um, to check the next solar system out to see if it's got any planets that are good for colonization. Um, it was originally, the program's originally set up by a body corp, by a company. So, you know, they're getting a profit. <laughs> um, and you know, there's, there's some questions about whether or not they're even meant to succeed or if the company just didn't care if they were going to succeed. Um, There's sort of half form thoughts, uh, in my opinion. Like uh, I do, I do recall Dragon's Dawn by Anne McCaffrey. There being a like a reason for the colonists to leave. Um, they wanted to go away from the com from the corporate and the high so and the high tech society, and they wanted to go low tech. And that was and well, they got what they wanted when Thread turned up. But um, that's sort of yeah. It, it, my that's one of my problems with this book is that the main character the characters you follow don't really feel like they've got that colonist intent um the main one the uh what's his name isaac he's he was a ceo and he's left he's the first person you follow um it was his idea his plan whatever and like I don't know, it just it just sounds like he wants to do it just because he hasn't done it before. It does it's not really like it's not like he's thought it through that he's like leaving everybody he knows behind. And um and I'm pretty sure I'm looking at Victoria, which is the second chapter, which is his second in command. And engineers, what happened? So I'm just, I'm trying to confirm. I am barely certain she's gay. And I don't mean that as a derogatory thing. I mean, colonizing, she's Gay, which means unless she's going to have artificial insemination she's but I'm pretty sure she says she doesn't want kids I know there's 
there's like two or three people in the main team that in their internal thoughts never wanted kids and it's like they're not the type of people you want to colonize a planet not unless they are very specific very um rare ability that they do something like you know maybe they're the only ones available that can figure out whether or not something is safe to eat there might be a very um, um alien biologist or something i don't know do you hear what i mean but when you get to the planet when they finally find the planet and they get there and they land the computer does everything for them and they and they've already got food so so really the only thing the human bodies are there for should be to colonize the planet which brings me to my other issue with this book and that is the ships themselves so they've got two ships so you know the whole and it's sold to you as two is better than one in case one is lost makes sense no problem that sounds good then they also use that um population rule oh, um, i don't i know it's got a particular name but i can't think of it where you've got to have a minimum of 500 people of a significant difference in gene pool to stop any so not families absolute individuals to allow for no genetic deformities so no inbreeding but the ships only hold i think it's 225 people i think that's got to be a so oh, i wish i could find it they literally say that so I just remember reading it and going hang on that's not enough people but at the same time if you're worried about losing one ship why not have ships that can hold 500 people a piece in that white case you're doubling your chances so as it is one of the ships goes missing and then when they land they go oh crap we can't be we have to sit and uh, we have to let the computer analyze everybody and make genetic matches um just for breeding purposes not for not for um like couples or families or whatever just you know do get, even artificial artificially inseminate that by all means but just keep the genetic a certain way so that we don't inbreed um and it's like well then why didn't you have 500 people on each ship in the first place i would have thought that would be just a logical way to solve the issue um but it is interesting it's an interesting book it has an interesting concept I didn't read anything going in, but afterwards the author's got like a little, um, why he, is it about the author and, uh, what's he written? He's written, my main reason for writing this book was to increase the reader's understanding and excitement in space exploration and to help everyone realize space exploration is necessary for the advancement of human life as we know it. And look, it's a good little book to show that. And it's, it's, it's not faultless. Um, the author's hand is pretty heavy at times, um, particularly when it comes to political things. Um, you can really sort of tell where he's thinking and where he's going. Um, and uh, But it's a good book all around. And I definitely look, and there's all of these indie books, I heartily recommend that you go get a copy yourself, support the author, give it a read. And if you don't enjoy it, chuck it in a little library for someone else to try. Anyway. That's it from me. You have a lovely day. I'm going to go and get ready for work. I shall see you soon. Oh, yeah. I would say like, comment and subscribe, but we're all adults here, so you can make up your own fucking mind about that. See you soon.